Today I'm going to be teaching how to divide larger numbers using both area models and partial quotients. Students have liked both of these methods, so I'm going to show them side by side today as I show you a three-digit example and a four-digit example, both dividing by a one-digit divisor. So by divided by four, divided by six, only going up to divided by nine. Um, the difference between these problems and the problems I've posted in previous videos is that these problems are going to have answers greater than 100. So instead of just look, students looking for groups of 10, like times 20, times 50, and trying to multiply up using groups of 10, they're going to be able to extend to groups of 100 or even 1,000. It uses the same methods as the previous problems that we've shown. It just takes more steps and it takes a little bit longer to solve. Just as if we did the standard algorithm for division, the long division method, just as in the same way, it would take a few more steps. Same thing over here. So I'm going to show you two examples of two different problems, both with area model and partial quotients in the same video. So students right now have really kind of been split in my fourth grade classes, half like the area model and half like partial quotients. I will show you them side by side so that you can even see how they connect. So the first problem we're gonna solve is a three digit one, 616 divided by four. And right away, I noticed that this 616 is greater than 400, so my answer is going to be greater than 100. So students are starting to realize that as well, when they're gonna have an answer that's in the hundreds instead of in the tens. So I'm gonna start with area model on this side. If I have 616 divided by four, I know that 100 groups of four will help me get rid of 400. And again, I'm trying to keep subtracting groups of four from my starting number, my dividend, until I get down to zero. So I know four times 100 will give me 400. And if I subtract 400, I have 216 left. You zoom in there. So now I have 216 left. Now this part, it gets a little trickier. Students are gonna have to think, what fours fact do I know that's pretty close to 216 without going over? One method I've showed them to help them out we call it the SMILE method, although that's not an official math term, just something the students like to use. If we kind of curve under the first two digits and we look at the 21, well, it's really 210, of course, because in the hundreds and tens place, but they think what fours fact is closest to 21? Well, if they skip count by fours, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, they know that four times five, I'll write this up here, is 20, so therefore, four times 50 is 200. So 200 is a fours fact that's pretty close to 216. So that's the fact we're gonna go with. So we know that four times 50 would give us 200. Since four times 50 is 200, that's what we're gonna subtract. And we're left with 16. So this really involves students to be able to use number sense and estimation to figure out a number that's pretty close to 216 when multiplied by four. There's not one right answer. Um, of course, this problem only has one answer, but there's not one correct way to solve the area model. Students might know four times 40 is 160 and go from there. There's many ways they could solve it. So now I'm actually gonna need more room. I'm gonna extend out my area model because I have 16 left. So now I'm thinking four times what will give me 16? I know four times four will give me 16. And then if I multiply four times four is 16, subtract, I'm down to zero. So now I can solve 100 plus 50 plus four is 154. We will not always end in zero. If we don't end in zero and we can't get it down all the way to zero, that just means there's a remainder. We haven't learned how to solve those yet. I would rather have students master them without remainders and then take remainders as the last step. So I'm gonna do the same problem using partial quotients so you can see the connection. Also, a lot of students do prefer partial quotients. So if I set up, 616 divided by four. I like to draw a line down here to keep my amount of groups of four separate. So I'm thinking, okay, I know similarly, if I make, take out 100 groups of four, if I subtract 100 groups of four, four times 100 is 400. That would be taking out 400. I'm left with 216. Again, I'm thinking, what force fact do I know that's closest to 216 without going over? And as we discovered before, four times 50 is 200, which is pretty close to 216. Now I have 16 left. I know four times four will give me 16 and I'm down to zero. 
I still get 154 groups of four as my answer. So that's an example of something in the hundreds. And the best way for students to know, do I need the hundreds or not, is for them to look at the dividend, the greater number, and think, is this greater than 100 times my divisor? In this case, 616 was greater than 100 times 4 or 400. So they knew they could pull out at least 100 groups. The other example I'm going to show is a number in the thousands. I'm going to start with 7,155 divided by 3. And I'm going to solve that both using an area model and using partial quotients as well. So right away I'm noticing this is in the thousands. So we're going to have to be pulling out large groups of three here. My answer is going to be pretty large. So if I start with an area model, I'm thinking three times what will give me remotely close to 7,155. Now this is going to take a few steps. I don't need to get super close. I could do three times 1,000 and take away 3,000 at a time, but I know that three times 2,000 is 6,000. I can do that and still have some left over. I can't go up to three times 3,000 though. That will be 9,000. I can't take away 9,000 without going into negative numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 2,000 this time. And again, you could do 1,000 and then 1,000 again. There's no correct, one correct way to solve the area model method. But most students will realize I can do that. Three times 2,000 is 6,000. I'll have 1,155 left. So now I'm thinking three times what is close to 1,155. This seems like a daunting task at first. But again, students can use um, the method of seeing what multiple of three is close to this. If they underline the first two digits they see, they think what three's multiple is close to 11. Of course, this is really not 11, it's 1,100. So it might go three, six, nine, 12. 12 is too high, so we're gonna go back to nine. If students know that three times three is nine, I'm all the way, I have 1,100. So we, are, we have to get to the hundreds. So 3 times 300 equals 900. This is a fact we can use. 900 is pretty close to 1,155. So we're going to do 3 times 300 and then take away 3 times 300, which is 900. We are going to have to do some regrouping here. However, I know that 11 minus 9 is 2. So now I'm down to 255. Not done yet. Have to extend out my area model. I have 255 left. Again, I'm going to look at the first two digits and think what multiple of 3 is close to 25 tenths. So the my 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. 8 times 3 is 24. So 80 times 3 will be 240. I now only have 15 left. That's good. I'm getting very close to zero. I'm going to need one more box. And now I'm thinking 3 times what equals 15? I know 3 times 5 is 15. And I'm, oops, sorry, this must be a minus sign. And I'm down to zero. My answer is 2,000 plus 300 plus 80 plus 5, or 2,385. You might think that does seem like a lot of work, and it is, I mean, it's a complicated problem, but it's very similar to the steps for long division. In long division, you are thinking how many times does three go into seven? It goes in two times with one left over. Same thing here. Three times two is six, we have 1,000 left over. It's just the difference is we're bringing the whole rest of the number down at once, instead of only bringing down one at a time. But you can see with long division, we're still wondering how many times does three go into 11, 1100 really and how many times is 3 going to 25 250 or 25 tens really and then finally how many times is 3 going to 15 similar looks different so the last thing I'm going to do in this video is show an example of the same problem using partial quotients so if we have 7155 divided by 3 I'm going to start by thinking well I know I can pull out 1000 groups of three and get rid of 3,000, or better yet, 2,000 groups of three, and I can get rid of 6,000. I'm going to have 1,155 left. Hmm. Can't pull out another 1,000 groups of three because I can't get rid of another 3,000. But I know that if I'm looking at almost like long division, how many times does three go into 11? 
Well, I know 3 times 300 is 900, as I solved above. So 300 groups of 3 would be 900. I'm going to have 255 left. Again, this does involve regrouping. I know my regrouping will still work out to be 11 minus 9, so I just went ahead and wrote 2. Now I have 255 left. I know 3 times 80 groups will give me 240, which is pretty close. And then if I do 255 minus 240, I will have 15 left. And then I know 3 times 5 more groups will give me 15. I'm down to zero. I still get my same answer, 2,385 groups of three. So that is a way to use area model and partial quotients with longer division problems. Later in the week, we'll look at what happens if it doesn't end in zero. Um, how do you work a remainder into an area model or partial quotients problem? Thanks for watching.